Welcome to our service today. And if you're watching this on live stream or as a recorded service, it's great that you can join us today. Later on, as you can see, um, the baptistry is open today, so we're holding a baptism service. So you have two services to participate in today. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord God, help us to hear your voice today, for we trust in you. Show us the way that we should walk in, for we lift up our souls to you. Teach us to do the thing that pleases you, for you are our God. Let your loving spirit lead us into the place of righteousness, for your name's sake. Amen. Thank you, Sally-Anne. Hey, it's lovely to see you here this morning, and we're privileged to worship the Lord our God. So if you're able to stand, I encourage you to stand. We're going to sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. So remember, we can use our bodies in worship, however that's comfortable for you. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise you. We thank you that your mercy and your love is new and fresh each morning. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to worship you. 
we thank you for the privilege of being with you. Jesus opened up the way for each one of us to come to our holy God. It's an awesome thing, isn't it, to come into the presence of our holy God. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we worship you. Lord, even as we are here to worship, we're here to listen to your word. Would you take anything away from us? Would you strip us of anything that's stopping us from worshipping you in spirit and in truth? Thank you, Lord. So we're going to hear scripture this morning. Uh, Thank you, Mike, if you'd read that. Thank you. The reading this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 1 and the first 14 verses. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful to Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In whom him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, was sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Amen. So I have to be careful about not moving around too much uh, this morning because obviously there's no danger of me toppling into the water. In a couple of hours' time, I'll have the privilege of baptising Pelagia. And the words I will say to her immediately before she's lowered into the water are these. I gladly baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as I told her this week, we go down into the water on the Holy Spirit. 
The letter to the Ephesians is full of references to the three persons of the Trinity. But actually, in Scripture, there is no mention of the word Trinity. So there's a question, isn't there? Should I be preaching on this topic today if it's not in Scripture? But although the Trinity is not specifically mentioned as a word in Scripture, I would argue that Jesus very much regarded himself as one of three persons. It's very clear that he relied completely upon his Father. In John 5, Jesus says, The Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees his Father does. And later in John's Gospel, Jesus explains that he has to go to be with his Father. But the Father will send the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. And Jesus says, if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. We thought it was important before we begin a series on the Holy Spirit to talk about the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because it can be very easy to get ourselves out of balance as Christians if we don't understand that relationship fully between the three persons of what is called, in theological terms, the Godhead. Now, this isn't an easy thing to explain. And to help us a little to understand something that is difficult to explain, I've brought something along today. Can anybody tell me what this is? A tripod, thank you very much. And actually it's a very sophisticated tripod. It belonged to Jonathan and it was given to me as a gift. Now, as you know, a tripod has three legs. On Friday, I led a committal of ashes for Sandy Todman. Fourteen people came, about the same number as here this morning. There were no other committed Christians. Now, I guess if I'd asked them, did they believe in God a number of them would have said, yes. What kind of God? That would be an interesting question, wouldn't it? Maybe a force for good, a transcendent being. In Ephesians 1, the passage that Mike's just read for us, Paul gives glory to God who blesses us with all kinds of blessings. And as I will say later on in the baptism service, When we reach out to God as our loving Father, he adopts us as his daughters and sons. That is our status with God. So God is the first leg of our tripod. Okay. But God is also Father to Jesus Christ. Now, if I'd asked the 14 people on Friday if they believed in Jesus, relatively few of them would have said, yes, Jesus is the Son of God. They may think of him as a good moral person or a wise teacher, but they wouldn't describe him as divine. And that would be what a Muslim or a Jew would say too. They would say that Jesus was a prophet, but that he was not divine. But what the early Christians knew was that Jesus himself said he was the Son of God and he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead as well as countless other miracles. So he showed that he had the power of God to give life. And that's the primary reason why the Jews sought to kill him because Jesus claimed equality with God. But the disciples and those close to Jesus knew that Jesus had come in human form. He ate with them. He laughed with them. He came to show us what God 
is like. And we looked at some of those characteristics of God at the beginning of the year. God, a God who creates, who is truthful, who is faithful, who is merciful, who is holy, and who is righteous. And Jesus' disciples saw Jesus being all these things. And they finally understood that Jesus was the Son of God when he was raised to life again. And they saw him resurrected. And Thomas makes that amazing declaration, my Lord and my God. Jesus' primary work that he was sent to do by his Father was to redeem the world. And through his death on the cross, our sins are forgiven. And we are restored to a relationship with God the Father. And God's plan is to reconcile the whole of humanity, to unite all things in him, as Paul puts it here. So Jesus is the second leg of our tripod. And in a couple of hours' time, I will ask Pelagia, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? And in making that declaration, she will publicly proclaim that she is making Jesus her first priority in her life. But what's the problem with my tripod now? What would happen if I let go of it? It would fall over, absolutely. Would I trust this with one of Phil's expensive f cameras? <laughs> no. He's shaking his head in the balcony. It's a bit wobbly, isn't it? And sometimes we can be wobbly Christians because we haven't fully experienced the infilling presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus breathes on his disciples when he appears to them in the locked room and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And in Ephesians 3, Paul prays that we may be strengthened with power through his Spirit in our inner being. The sign of someone being a follower of Jesus is that, as Paul puts it, they continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit throughout their lives. The act of baptism in water is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But we can continue every day to ask God to keep on filling us with the power of the Holy Spirit. So in the baptistry pool, I will pray the prayer that Paul prays for the Christians in Ephesus. That Pelagia is filled with power through the Holy Spirit, living within her. That she may be filled with all the fullness of God. The Holy Spirit is the third leg of our tripod. And now what do we have? Stability. As it says in the Old Testament in Ecclesiastes, a three-stringed cord cannot be broken. We pray to God the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, guided and empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'd like us all to stand, if we're able now. And what I would like us to do as we stand is open our hands out like this. And I'm going to pray for all of us now for spiritual strength. And I'm going to pray the prayer that Paul prayed for the Christians in Ephesus. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sally Ann. I invite you, you can still stand or sit, just to continue to receive the blessing that Andy has prayed for us as we sing this Trinity song. So we continue in prayer. Sheila's going to lead us with our intercessory prayer. Thank you, Sheila. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this revelation 
that you have given to us of your nature in the Trinity. Lord, thank you that you are Father, you are Son, you are Holy Spirit. And we thank you that we have that, that threefold cord, that, that tripod that is so stable for us. Thank you, Lord, for, your, for, for the Trinity. Thank you, Lord. You are all we need. <clears throat> so this month, uh, our mission focus is the Bible Society. You can find out more about them on their website, but just a few words for those who don't know. Their vision was inspired by one young Welsh girl's desire to own a Bible in her own language. So in 1800, Mary Jones had saved up for six years and she walked 26 miles to buy a Welsh Bible. The Bible Society has been working for over 200 years to help make the Bible available to every man, woman and child in the world. They translate and distribute Bibles so that people can read God's word in their heart language particularly in China, the Middle East, and Southern Africa. Many people groups still do not have the Bible in their own language. They also engage in leadership training and literacy programs, and there are now around 150 local Bible society branches in the world. All their efforts are driven by one conviction, we believe that when people engage with the Bible, lives can change for good. I think we would agree with that. In England and Wales, against the backdrop of widespread Bible indifference, they're working to help adults and children recognize the value of the Bible and advocate for its place in society. And here is an example of what they produce. The upheaval of recent times has been bewildering and unsettling. Our world is full of uncertainty and it can be hard to know where to turn for trustworthy guidance. Could the Bible help make sense of life today? What if its ancient wisdom still held the key to human flourishing? Join me on a journey through the storyline of Scripture. We'll begin with our origins in Genesis and explore six major biblical events all the way through to our future destination. And on the way, we'll discover how relevant the Bible still is to our human needs for meaning, freedom, peace, love, community, and an ultimate home. In short, digestible chapters, we'll see how the whole Bible forms one coherent narrative that makes sense of our human story. And it's personal. Through guided readings and practical reflections, we'll learn how to apply this ancient wisdom to our everyday lives. Discover for yourself how the Bible can be a limitless source of guidance and hope. Seaford Baptist Church supports the Bible Society financially, so let's join with their vision and pray for this work. Lord, you told us to go into all the world and make disciples. We need your written word in all languages to be able to do that effectively. We thank you that we have the Bible in our own language, in many versions. We thank you for the work of the Bible Society, and we pray that you would continue to supply all their financial needs to be able to fulfill their vision. We pray you would empower and guide by your Holy Spirit all those who work with the Bible Society, 
that you would give them your strategies to be even more effective. You said the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So please send more laborers to help in this vital work. Lord, we thank you for the Bible. We're sorry when we take it for granted and don't read it regularly as we should. We pray that our commitment and obedience to your word would increase, that we would be people of the book. We pray that our desire for the Bible would be as passionate as that of Mary Jones. Please open our hearts to understand the Bible when we read it and to put it into practice in our everyday lives. We thank you for anointed teachers who bring your word to life, but we also thank you that we have the Holy Spirit to teach each one of us. Paul's associate, Timothy, knew the Holy Scriptures from childhood, which, it says, are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Paul wrote, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lord, we thank you that the scripture instructs us and corrects us. It equips and safeguards us against deception and error. We thank you that your word is our spiritual food. It builds us up, it encourages us, and it unites us as one body, the church of Jesus Christ, which you promised you would build. We agree with the Bible Society that when people engage with the Bible, lives can change for good. We thank you that it's changed our own lives and so we pray for their work in our own nation to counteract the apathy and indifference. We pray for open doors into more schools to bring knowledge of the Bible to the children and also to their parents and their teachers. We pray that the place of the Bible in our society would be restored, that it wouldn't just be considered another book that contains myths and fables, but that it will be recognized as the true word of God in its entirety. <clears throat> we pray for all leaders of churches across our nation that they would uphold and promote the truth of the Bible. We pray for Christians in their workplaces that they would not be ashamed or afraid to refer to the Bible we pray that they would be able to introduce its principles to their colleagues and make the Bible relevant to their work. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Lord, your word is a sword that can cut through error and expose truth. We pray that it would do this in the corridors of power in our nation. And we thank you that our Prime Minister even quoted from it in his Easter message. In the past, our laws were founded on your word and we're sorry that we have deviated from it in so many ways. We pray that the laws of our nation would once again be founded on your holy Bible. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers, which we pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our closing song again refers to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Feel free to stand.
Praise Him above you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. just lift up our praises as we stand now as we give thanks to God Father Son and Holy Spirit I just encourage you to to bring your prayers as as where you are or you can come to the microphone just uh, just lift up our praises and our prayers to God now Father, as we witnessed that solemn funeral yesterday, I want to thank you for Her Majesty the Queen, for her faith, and for the way that she has served you and is serving you now. And I want to pray, Lord, that you would bless her, even in this terrible time of grief for her. And I thank you, Lord, that we have a queen who honors and serves you in our nation. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that she acknowledges you as her Lord. Mm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Watches from whatever country they may be touched by your power, by your inspiration, mm. by the purity, the clarity, the understanding of your Holy Spirit. Mm. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 And Lord, we do give you thanks and praise that. Today we will witness a young lady going through the waters of baptism, committing her life to following you. And we thank you, Lord, for the way in which you continue to work in people's hearts today through your Holy Spirit. We particularly pray for our young people, for those who are, have faced really difficult times over this last year because of disruption to schooling and um, issues of, of mental health and mental well-being and confusion and fear about the future for them. Lord, I would pray that they would look to you as their rock, as their um, 
three-legged tripod on which they can base their lives. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So may the love of the Father enfold us, the wisdom of the Son enlighten us, the fire of the Holy Spirit enflame us, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon us and abide with us now and evermore. Amen.